be pretty, but it sure is going to be delicious. Laksa Lemek, one of my all-time favourite versions of laksa, also known as curry laksa. It's a specialty in Malaysia, served in Singapore as well. And my goodness, look at all these ingredients we have here. Yes, there's a lot of stuff here, guys, but the actual technique is really simple, I promise. Let's do it together. All right, so let's start off, first of all, with the prawn stock first. And this is where I think a lot of recipes take more of a shortcut, but I'm not about that for this one. I really want to get the right flavor and the right color. So to do that, I start off with some oil and then I've got some prawn shells here, the heads and the shells, and I'm going to use the prawn meat later, but these guys are going to flavor our stock. Now I want these guys to sizzle away for a few minutes so that all of their essential flavors and oils and aromas go into the pot. So we'll just leave those alone while we make our paste. Now I've got some dried chilies here. I've had them soaking in some hot water. I always like to put a little bowl or a plate on top, make sure that all the chilies are getting a good soaking. And then just squeeze out some of that water, trim off any really firm bits, and then just slice those. Now save the chili soaking liquid in case we need some of that to moisten up our mixture as it blends. You'll see what I mean later on. Uh, the next thing we need is some galangal and some ginger. And I thought I'd show you these guys side by side because if you have a look, the galangal is a lot paler, it's pink in color. Uh, now, the galangal has a lot more of a kind of citrusy, pine forest kind of aroma and flavor, whereas the ginger is a little bit deeper and mellower. You want both for this one. And I just slice off some galangal, just peel off the outside layer. Now, if you don't get to your Asian grocer very often, Buy a whole bunch of galangal and ginger. They freeze really well. Just cut them into kind of like four centimeter portions. Generally, that's what you're using for a recipe. And then you've got them there, ready and waiting. And the ginger. I also need some garlic here and some red Asian shallots. These ones are really small, so I'm just gonna leave them whole and pop them straight in the blender. And some lemongrass. Now, once you've bruised that lemongrass, just slice the end off and then peel off that outer layer. It's always really tough and it doesn't really blend up very well. And just finally slice that inner part. And you want some coriander root here as well. And then these guys here are macadamia nuts. Now traditionally you would use what's called candle nuts, which look very similar, but they're a lot firmer and a lot more bitter than macadamia nuts. But even I have trouble finding candle nuts here in Thailand, so I thought you guys might as well. Macadamias will do it a pinch, kind of adds a little bit of a creaminess and thickens up the sauce a little bit. Now we get to some real pungent little flavors here. I've got some dried shrimp that I've had soaking in some water. That's to soften them a little bit. So I'll just get them out of that water and some shrimp paste. So shrimp paste is one of those ingredients that I recommend just using. Don't smell it. Uh, it has a very funky smell, but it'll add a kind of uh, savory umami flavor to your laksa that you won't get with just using salt. So a little dash of that. And now the spices. So I want some turmeric and some coriander seeds. Dash of salt and now spoon in some of that liquid to help your blender blades kind of get through all those aromatics. A lot of people like to add oil here, but I find the oil emulsifies like it would with a mayonnaise, which is sort of the wrong texture. and also seems to affect the flavor as well. So water is much better. And blend. Now, unless you have one of those super high powered like restaurant quality blenders, you're gonna need to give this a little bit of love. So use your spoon to push everything down in there and it looks to me like everything's still kind of chopped rather than being blended and pureed. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water here. All right, so this is the kind of texture that we're after here. I don't mind it being a little bit bitsy because then people kind of know that it's homemade and I didn't use the store-bought paste, which is totally fine as well, by the way. But uh, it is wonderful to be making this from scratch when you do have the time. All right, so let's see how our prawn shells are doing. And it's exactly what I'm looking for. I kind of want to use my spoon to press down on some of these prawn heads and release all of that good red stuff inside. 
Now, if you're Asian or half Asian like me, then you would have had a mother telling you to eat your prawn heads because they're very good for you. So, in my mum's book, this would be a very healthy dish. Now, see all that lovely red oil in the bottom of the pan there? That's exactly what we want. We want a beautiful sheen of that over the top of our laksa at the end. All right, so to that, I'm gonna add some chicken stock. And then just to boost the flavor even more and to give us some juicy pieces of chicken to add to our soup later on, I'm gonna add some bone-in chicken thighs here as well. Now let this come up to a simmer and you wanna let it go for about 20 or 30 minutes to really let all those flavors develop in there. Now as that stock's been simmering, I've just been scooping off some of this foamy part. Just get this fine a little bit here. Don't take too much of the oil, just try and leave that there and just get rid of that white foam. Now take out your pieces of chicken, save those for later and strain your stock. And look at that glorious red sheen we've got on the top of that stock and that beautiful red color there. Mm, just perfect. So that's about half of our laksa soup broth done. Let's get on to the other part now. I want some more oil in a really large pot here and then that paste we made. Now I've made enough here for a double batch which means you can pop the rest in the freezer and use it a little later on. So just half of that in here. Wow, and doesn't that smell amazing? All of those aromatics and the spices. Mm. Now as with any curry paste, I wanna give it some time to fry in that oil, soften all the aromatics, get them to release all of their flavors and essential aromas and oils. Now I'm gonna add in my coconut cream and our beautiful stock. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of seasoning here and a little bit at the end. First off, I want some fish sauce and a dash of sugar, a little pinch of salt. And then let this simmer for about 15 minutes more to let all those flavors make friends in there and become really nice and intense. Now this is smelling amazing. So we're nearly there guys. I'm gonna add in some fried tofu. So have a look here, it's just these little puffy squares of tofu and they'll kind of get really nice and soft and soak up some of that liquid. And then another traditional ingredient here is some fish balls. So you could totally leave these guys out if you can't get to an Asian grocer to find them, but you will find them in traditional laksa dishes, so I like to add them in. And I'll just wait for that tofu to soften a little bit, and while I'm doing that, I'm gonna check the seasoning. Mm, wow, that flavor is such an explosion. It just, this so complex, all those beautiful aromatics, and that creamy coconut. I do think I need a little bit more seasoning here. So I'm gonna add in some fish sauce. Mm, that really is tasting great now. Oh, yum. Now in go my prawns. And you just wanna simmer that a little bit longer until those prawns are cooked through. So in the meantime, let's talk about our noodles. And I'm using some rice noodles here, but the very thin, flat kind. So you can see here, that's what they look like. If you've just got vermicelli rice noodles, that's fine. Even egg noodles is fine as well. And you just want some rapidly boiling water here and add in your noodles. And once they're nice and tender, just drain them straight into a bowl. And then your laksa soup goes on top. Now don't forget about the chicken that we made earlier in our broth. Just shredded that, I'm gonna pop that on top. And then always a non-negotiable for me, I need an egg in there and some bean shoots. Just a little sprinkling of coriander. Now you want a lime wedge here as well to squeeze over just before you eat. And then as if there wasn't enough flavor and spice here, always you need a little bit of sambal at the end. It's like a spicy chili paste. And there you go guys, that is one heavenly looking bowl. Oh, I can't wait to dig in. Oh, wow. That is just, I mean, all of those huge flavors now creating something really beautiful and harmonious, a little bit spicy. It's that little tang of lime at the end is so good. Mm. I'm totally gonna get this all over myself. It's not gonna be pretty, but it sure is gonna be delicious.
first one is getting the marinade just right. So we start off with a little bit of fish sauce and then some dark soy sauce for a little bit of color and some sugar and then some finely diced red shallots or Asian shallots. You'd use eschalots as well or some red onion if that's what you've got. And then you want some garlic as well, finely chopped and a really good hit of pepper. To me, it's that garlic and pepper combination that really makes this a classic Vietnamese marinade. Now, half this marinade is gonna go into some pork mince and we're gonna make some epically tasty little pork meat walls with that. Give that a good mix. Start off with the spoon and then you're just gonna have to get your hands in there because you really wanna mix and work that pork. And then you wanna get your hands in there because you really wanna work that pork until it becomes nice and sticky. You'll see how the texture changes. It's almost like you're kneading a dough because we're working those proteins in the meat and then we wanna start slapping. This is exactly where my mum does it to get the right texture on her Thai fish cakes. It works just as well with these meatballs. Okay, we want some decent sized little patties here. Now to get the most flavor out of these guys, you really wanna let them marinate for at least a couple of hours. Overnight is best. All right, now let's talk about the sliced pork. Now I'm using pork belly because I love pork belly. <laughs> it has a beautiful amount of fat and flavor. Um, if you would rather use a leaner cut, go right ahead. All you wanna do is slice it into mm, pieces about, I'd say like half a centimeter thick. A delicately sized piece of pork belly, if you like. Now the rest of our marinade goes onto that pork. Just mix that through. And then again, you wanna let this have some time to really develop some flavor. So at least two hours or overnight. Now the dressing. Now this part is one of the most crucial. It's really all about getting a balance of sweet, sour, tangy. And first of all, we want a little bit of fish sauce. Well, a little bit, a lot of fish sauce. <laughs> and then some sugar, a little bit of vinegar and some water. Now you wanna heat this up until the sugar's dissolved. Okay, sugar's dissolved, that's looking good. Let's just have a little taste. Tangy, sweet, sour, love it. Okay, now here's my big tip when you're making this kind of dressing. Let this cool down and once it's cool, pour it into a bowl and then add in your lime juice. If you add the lime juice in at the beginning when you're cooking the sauce, you lose all the freshness and the tang. Now speaking of pork, here we go, my favorite part. Okay, just brush your pan with a little bit of oil and then here we go. Mm. And now would you look at that color? So this is why the marinade is all important. That little bit of sugar and that seasoning is giving us a beautiful crust on the outside of our little meatballs. Okay, now these are looking super delicious. We'll take these off. Now, I've got quite a bit of fat left here in the pan, so I don't think I'll add any more oil just get those strips of pork belly straight in there. Okay, now these pieces really take no time at all. Just wanna wait until you've got that lovely color on the outside and then flip them straight away. Pork belly will stay really nice and tender as long as you cook it really quickly. It's either a low and slow or a very fast cooking meat. I'm just gonna pour a little bit of that marinade in there as well. Give it some extra flavor and some extra sizzle. Who doesn't like extra sizzle? Looking good, get those pork pieces out. Okay, now here's the thing with this pork, we're not done with it yet. A few pieces of pork belly and a few of those little pork patties go into a bowl. And then that dressing we made earlier is actually to dress this, the pork. And so pour that dressing over the top and what you get is this amazing marriage of porky juices, sweet, sour, tangy dressing and that is what's going to make this noodle salad extra special at the end. And now everyone has their own individual bowl and it's just about picking up bits and pieces and mixing it and it all getting delicious. So start off with a little bit of noodle and then of course you want a few pieces of pork along with some of that amazing dressing. And then pick off a few little pieces of herbs, some lettuce. I want some of that pickled papaya. The recipe for that's on my website if you wanna give it a go, it's really easy. And then everyone can add their own little dash of chili or garlic to taste. And then mix it all up and create your own perfect bite. That, guys, it's amazing.
All right, guys, not gonna lie, there are quite a few different elements here that we have to perfect. Uh, there is the chicken, there is the rice, there is the soup, there are the sauces. Um, but don't worry, we're gonna go on a bit of a journey together uh, and it is totally gonna be worth it in the end. Let's talk about the chicken first of all. I've got a couple of little you know, tips and tricks throughout this recipe that are gonna help you out a little bit. Uh, with the chicken, for me, I, a, a chicken on the smaller size is better for this. It works, uh, it cooks more evenly and more quickly uh, in the in the soup. This is about a 1.2 kilo chicken, so just so you know. Now, the first thing we want to do is steal a little bit of chickeny fat and chicken skin from this guy because we need that to flavor our rice. Okay, so what you want to do is get in here with your scissors and just chop off any little bits here at the end. You know, some little fatty bits, some skin bits, and then just save those for later. So yeah, any spare bits of fat or skin that you can find, I usually find there's like a little tiny bit just over here near the neck as well that you can grab hold of. Okay, so we've got a little bit of chicken fat and skin saved for our rice. Now what we wanna do is just give our guy a bit of a salt rub before we start poaching him. So you want a whole lot of salt here. I'm using a flaky sea salt, but you know, any kind of salt that you have at home is, is fine here. And just really kind of rub it in and then now he's good to go. So let's have a chat about what's going on in my pot over here. And you can see that I have some stock that's already kind of a little bit warm in here. And here's the little secret, guys. If you are eating this dish in a hawker center in Singapore or Malaysia, uh, you're generally gonna have some MSG in there, usually. And so when I was making this dish at home, I'm always like, how can I make it taste more like a hawker center style dish? And I don't use MSG at home, so, the secret is to use some chicken stock cubes. That's right guys, don't go for like some fancy, you know, really expensive uh, chicken stock. You just wanna go for some chicken stock cubes. Um, I use the all natural ones, so they don't have MSG either. And that is gonna start you off on the right foot here. All right, so we've got the stock cube giving us like the salty, savory umami flavors that we need for our chicken in our soup. But we need a few other things here to really make this super special. Um, and that is some ginger, just a few slices. And then the other really defining characteristic for a Hainanese chicken rice. And so we've got the chickeny, we've got the gingery, and then you also need the spring oniony. Sure, it's not a word, I know, but whatever. You get what I mean. Um, so with the spring onion, I'm gonna use the pale part a little bit later on, and I just want the green tops right now. So just slice those greens and get those into your soup as well. All right, so we're now at like a super, super critical stage of our chicken rice recipe. So Hainanese chicken rice, the chicken at the end should be really soft and juicy and silky. Uh, and you get that by poaching really gently. And I mean really gently. What we wanna do is see just the tiniest, like the barest little whisper of bubbles coming up here. Uh, and I want that chicken to kind of luxuriate in that warm little bath for about 40 minutes. So while our chicken is doing its thing, we are gonna get started on making the green sauce, which is essentially like this really epic spring oniony, gingery, amazing little condiment. First of all, we wanna start off with a little bit of ginger, so just some finely chopped ginger. And then back to those spring onions we had earlier, I've got just the pale and a little bit of the green part here, and I just wanna finely chop those. Now I want a really good sprinkling of salt in here. And then you wanna pound this to like a fairly rough kind of paste. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Okay, so this is the kind of situation that you're looking for here. Already it is smelling so beautiful, I love that ginger spring onion smell. Um, but what we need to do here is make some hot oil that's gonna pour over the top of this and make it into the sauce that we need. So what you need is a little bit of vegetable oil or canola oil or peanut oil, just like a neutral flavored oil. And then a little bit of sesame oil. And now just heat this up for a, a couple of minutes, you know, two or three minutes here. And now that I can see it's kind of just shimmering away, I'm gonna pour that over the spring onion. Oh, that's 
sizzle is so satisfying. Uh, so that heat of that oil has like released even more of the spring onion and ginger flavors. And so just give that a mix. And now we have this beautiful little, almost like it's like an emulsion really. And um, if I just have a little taste here. Mm. So much flavor there, like such simple ingredients and you have beautiful like hint of onion and the garlic and it's salty as well and then the sesame oil ah everything perfect sauce I might just add a little bit more salt here just for a little bit of extra you know special and then I'm gonna set that aside until later okay guys so we're on to our next element of this very special chicken rice dish and that is the rice so 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 important um, how do we get that beautiful kind of like it's almost like each rice grain should have a sheen of like chicken fat. And we've got a little bit of a garlic flavor as well. So what we need to do is get started on getting that kind of chicken fat flavor. So we've got our little bits and pieces that we took off the chicken earlier. So I wanna get that into a saucepan. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil here to kind of get things going. And now turn this onto like a low-ish heat. What I want is for that chicken to have time to render out all its deliciousness uh, before it gets too brown or, or burnt. So you want these guys in here for at least 10 minutes. Okay, so while that chicken fat is doing its thing and sizzling away, uh, let's come back and have a look at our chicken. So this guy has had the 40 minutes simmering away in that soup. What I want to do now is turn the heat off and just pop a lid on and just let him sit in there for another like 20 minutes just to make sure that the chicken is cooked all the way through but but really gently again we're going with the gentle heat the gentle cooking this chicken is getting so much love my goodness all right so we are looking very brown and golden in here with our little chicken bits and pieces so i'm going to take these guys out and you know who's going to be eating those little bits and pieces later on. Uh, that would be me. Um, but let's get back to uh, the lovely little sheen of oil and fat that we have in our pan here. This is going to make a great base for our chicken rice. So I want to grab my garlic. The garlic is kind of, you know, not all, I would say, not all chicken rice recipes put the garlic in here, but I like it. You could leave it out if you want to uh, and just add the rice in. But I'm going to go with garlic. And now the rice. So I'm using Thai jasmine rice. Um, a, a long grain rice is really what you want here. Uh, now just pour that in and you really want to give that a mix so that each little rice grain is getting a little bit of love from that chicken fat and the oil and the garlic. All right, so now this rice needs to borrow a little bit of stock from our chicken. So let's uncover this guy. And then I've got two cups of rice in here. So I want two and a half cups of the stock. And now what you want to do is wait for that rice to kind of absorb most of the stock. You'll see what I mean. Give it about 10 minutes on like a medium heat and then we'll come back and have a look. Okay, so now you can see most of that liquid's been absorbed, but the rice is still quite firm. It's not quite cooked through. So I want you to put the lid on. And now turn the heat down really low and let that cook for another 10 minutes. All right, so let's get back to our chicken, guys. I know, so many different elements today, but we're nearly there, I promise. Uh, now have a look in here. You can see that the leg joints are kind of starting to come away from the body. Now that tells me that that chicken is pretty well cooked. Um, and I don't want to overcook it for sure. So let's get him out. And now while our chicken's cooling down a little, I'm gonna strain off our stock. Okay, so now we're getting to the stage where, you know, like you're in the hawker center and the guy's like bang, 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 bang. And he's like chopping the chicken. Okay, so we're not quite gonna, you know, do it like that, but uh, I'll show you an easy way you can do it at home. Uh, grab a hold of your chicken. Try not to like break that beautiful skin that's on the top of the chicken breast. Now you wanna start by getting in here where the leg joint is. Just slice through. Oh, look at how juicy that chicken is. And it should literally almost just pull apart at the end here and then pull off that leg. Now do the other side. And 
And then for the chicken breast, you want to start through the middle or just off the center to the middle and just slice through there. And then just kind of run your knife down along that bone and just keep pulling that breast off. And then just a little snap through the end. And there you have your chicken breast. Same on the other side. And now guys, this is totally what I'm talking about with, you know, that beautiful, just cooked, you know, still juicy kind of chicken. Like you can see that that skin is really nice and shiny and, you know, that meat looks really nice and tender, not overcooked at all. One last thing we're going to do here though, to give our chicken a little extra special something something is um, add a little bit of sesame oil. So I just want you to drizzle some sesame oil and rub that all over. Okay, so now that this chicken has literally been like massaged, poached, all things, <laughs> we're gonna slice, finish off the slicing just through the breast here. And through that thigh joint. And now guys, we are finally ready to assemble our dish. Let's have a look at our rice. Now, you just want to use a fork and fluff up those grains. And then scoop some rice into a little bowl. I mean, you know, this is totally OTT, but like it's the way you get it in a hawker center. So, you know, I like to do it this way. And then tip that out onto your plate. And now you want some of your chicken. I like to do a mix of sliced breast and thigh meat here. And now for the condiments, we've got our green sauce that we made. And then I always like to have a little bit of chili here. I'm just using like a sambal olic, but you could use a Chinese garlic and chili paste as well. Store what's fine for this one, guys. And some cucumber. Now, don't forget that amazing chicken broth. And then one Final thing, just a little drizzle of some sweet soy sauce on the chicken. And there you go guys, a very classic Hainanese chicken rice. Yes, a lot of steps, a lot of bits and pieces to get right, but wow, this is really gonna be worth it. All right, I want some chicken, all the bits and pieces. Okay, so literally like the perfect mouthful right now. Oh, so good. Mm. Guys, if you have never tried Hainanese chicken rice, you need to make this. I mean, there is so much going on there. That amazing like spring onion, ginger sauce, and then that chili. Mm. And the chicken is so beautifully silky and soft. It's just perfect. And then kind of had a little, have a little mouthful of soup in between. Mm. Perfectly soothing and chickeny and amazing. Wow, guys, this really is a keeper dish. Oh, I am going to enjoy eating this entire thing. Mm. Yum.